Good afternoon. My name is Paul Fehrenbacher, co-founder and CEO of Brightseed, a Chicago-based medical device company. And before I tell you what we do, let me tell you why we do it. For the last 10,000 years, surgeons have been directly holding onto surgical tools while physically touching the patient. They've used touch to do such things as identify blood vessels, discriminate between uh, cancer margins, and try to identify healthy versus diseased tissue. And this remained unchanged until the recent shift towards minimally invasive procedures, including laparoscopic, robotic, and even telesurgery. You see here in laparoscopic surgery, this is called a thermal ligature device, the most widely used minimally invasive cutting tool. The surgeon is removed from the patient, inserts it through a small hole in the abdomen, is looking at a video monitor to perform the surgery, all while not touching the patient, and he has to try to manipulate it towards the tissue that he's, he's either identifying to avoid or to cut. <coughs> This is where surgeries, this is where surgery is headed. In our lifetime, you know, actually probably within the next decade or two, we're gonna hear the following. We're gonna hear about telesurgery where surgeons perform operations on soldiers on the battlefield, on patients on the other side of the world. Yes, and even astronauts in space. And the reason for this is, there, is that there's plenty of upside to minimally invasive surgery. Decreased infection rate, less scarring, quick recovery time. But there's one fundamental flaw, the lack of tactile sensation. This is a laparoscopic colon reception where the surgeon has trouble identifying the artery. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it doesn't take someone who's a future entity like myself to know that this is not what's supposed to happen. And what's really scary is that vascular injuries, in terms of the United States, there's six million procedures each year that are at risk for Published data indicates that the incidence rate is as high as 3.3%. And when an injury occurs, the mortality rate, the death rate, is as high as 18%. The Brightseed team did a deep dive into Northwestern Hospital's surgical outcome data in 2011, and we found that when a patient undergoes a vascular injury, the added cost of care is $210,000 per patient. A lot of this cost is due to the fact that what traditionally is a three-day hospital stay, turns into a 12-day ordeal with more corrective procedures. The Bright Seed team, using Northwestern faculty and graduate students, was an interdisciplinary team. We committed ourselves through New Invention Medical Innovation, a program with a na national track record of developing and commercializing breakthrough technologies. With our SafeSense technology integrated into existing surgical cutting tools, the surgeon can identify the presence of blood vessels in real time. Using near-infrared light, SafeSense is able to penetrate tissue and obtain important information about blood metrics. The Brightsea team has strategically decided to integrate our device into this thermal ligature device because it's the most widely used surgical cutting tool. With SafeSense, the surgeon is able to use a thermal ligature device towards tissue and in real time will be alerted to the presence of blood vessels on the video monitor he or she is already looking at. And should a real dangerous cut be heard, we possibly can provide an auditory or vibratory sensation as well. SafeSense seamlessly integrates into the natural workflow of the surgeon. There's no change needed in the behavior of the surgeon, which is incredibly important. I'd now like to turn the presentation over to Dr. Jonathan Gum. Thanks, Paul. As CTO of Brightseed, I bring a dual PhD in engineering as well as three years of law school experience where I studied intellectual property and entrepreneurship law. But I'm not the only engineer behind SafeSense. In fact, the technology was developed by a team of scientists and engineers with expertise in bioengineering, biophotonics, computer science, and surgery. In addition, we made the strategic decision to join joined with Insight Product Development, a world-renowned design firm with two decades of experience building out thermal ligature devices as well as near-infrared devices. And importantly, when their team of engineers, which is over 60 plus, learned about SafeSniff's technology, the company decided to invest $100,000 worth of their time and efforts towards our project. So what is SafeSniff's and how does it work? Well, Paul already told you that SafeNips is built on the fact that light can safely and non-invasively detect hidden blood vessels before a dangerous cut is made. And so what we did was we built in 
uh, light emitting diodes into the, one of the surgical jaws and a series of uh, detector arrays on the bottom opposite jaw. Near infrared light is then projected across the cutting field, and if a vessel is present, <clears throat> our, our Safe SNPs technology and our proprietary algorithms will actually deconvolute that signal and produce real vital metrics about the, the blood vessel that the surgeon can understand. This includes presence of the vessel, its diameter down to the millimeter, orientation of the vessel, blood flow velocity, and oxygen saturation. And what's important is that they can do all of this in real time. And we want to get this technology into the OR as quickly as possible. And so we built out a three-phase development plan to get us to do that. Phase one, I'm pleased to report, is complete. We built out a benchtop model that can demonstrate the core SafeSnips technology in real time. And we were also able to file for all of our patent protections surrounding that technology using just contributions by the co-founders, as well as just over $100,000 worth of non-dilutive cash and in-kind services that we were awarded through three uh, business plan competitions. Phase two of development began earlier this month. And that's where we take that safe sense technology and translate it over into a porcine animal model. To do that, we're currently in the middle of a seed round raise, and we have commitments to over half of that $500,000 by experienced med device angels. As you can see, that $500,000 will actually get us through the porcine model and into phase three of development. That third and final phase of development will begin early next year, and that's where we actually take the SafeSnips technology and scale it down to the size that it fits into those thermal ligature devices. To do that, right now we're applying for SBIR Phase 1 grants, non-dilutive funding, <clears throat> which we hope to, hope to receive. But we're also being strategic and looking forward to a 1 million plus round raise uh, during that year. And that'll get us through the actual development of phase three and into full on commercialization of the SafeSnip technology. And I'd like to briefly talk a little bit about the, uh, our patent portfolio. Right now, the core SafeSnip technology is, pr is protected by a uh, filed PCT application with the benefit of an early 2012 filing date, as well as a filed provisional patent application. Additional filings are expected over the coming months. That, that technology, the, the technology that's covered, includes the development of an array of, of imaging modalities and their implementation in these cutting devices. And what's exciting is that Northwestern is progressive thinking. The new mention program that, that Paul already discussed actually waives the rights to any technology that comes out of the program. So the SafeSnips technology is wholly owned by BrightSea as a company, and all subsequent technology has been developed outside of Northwestern. So BrightSea will be the sole owner of all of its intellectual property. And as a registered patent agent and in counsel with our patent attorneys, we believe that we're filling up the available patent white space quickly. And to do that, we're looking at three core areas of technology that we want to cover. And that includes the near-infrared light emitter hardware and design, our uh, algorithm development, as well as user interface elements, including auditory, visual, and haptic feedback. And now I'd like to turn the presentation back over to Paul. We have a strong management team. In addition to John, we have Dr. Hari Subramani, a research professor of biophotonics with over a decade of experience obtaining important blood vessel metrics using near infrared light. We also have Dr. David Mahdi. He's the vice chair of surgery at Northwestern Memorial Hospital, who's also the chief of GI and oncologic surgery. He's considered one of the best medical device innovators in the Midwest. We also have Mayan Vigivergia. Uh, He's a co-founder of Brightseed. He's also an inventor of the Safe Systems Technology. I'm a fourth year medical student with a passion for medical device innovation and also a passion for surgery. This included spending a year in Haiti where I volunteered at a surgery clinic. But what I want to do for my career is medical device innovation. I also have operational and management experience including serving as the preclinical director at a biotech company. And I want to note that all three of us have decided to delay our graduation dates to serve full time at Brightseed and this was done with Northwestern's blessing. 
Because of our management team strength, we've received such awards as being recognized as one of Chicago's top 10 most innovative companies in 2012. And just three days ago, we were featured on the front page of the Chicago Tribune's business section as being a great medical device startup. Our advisory board is exemplary as well. It includes the former chairman and CEO of St. Jude Medical, executive director of a VC firm, who's also the co-founder of Akamai, managing partner of one of the best medical device incubators in Silicon Valley, and two seasoned successful medical device CEOs. We were able to form such an advisory board because they know no company has integrated existing blood vessel, te blood vessel technology into existing surgical cutting tools. That said, there are alternative options. This includes a laparoscopic Doppler probe, manufactured by the likes of Coben and Vascular Technology Incorporated. But this is a separate device. And as a separate device, the surgeon has to insert it through a port, move it around, try to locate the vessel. It takes added time. It's not as precise. It does not provide diameter size. And for this reason, it's infrequently used. Interoperative imaging is another alternative. Using an MRI or CT scan or a near infrared scan with a contrast agent, you're able to get a big roadmap of where the vasculature is, whereas SafeSense tells you right what's in front of the car before the surgeon makes a cut. But this is an expensive technology, and also it takes even more time than the laparoscopic Doppler probe. Intersafeness. We can manufacture safeness at a low enough price point for it to have a retail cost of around $200. We're also able to provide diameter size of the blood vessel, and this is all without using a contrast agent. These devices are disposable. That means we're going to have a reoccurring revenue stream since they're only used once through our licensing deal. As a medical device company, you have to know how your device is going to be reimbursed, because healthcare insurance controls how healthcare is administered. Our reimbursement expert predicts that we're going to be able to use existing MSDRG and CPT codes. Similarly, we have a clear pathway to FDA approval. Our reimbursement expert predicts that we're going to be considered a class two device by the FDA with a 510k clearance. We have a $1.22 billion uh, market open to us by integrating our technology into thermal ligature devices in the United States alone. And this market has a compound annual growth rate of 7% a year. The Brightsea team has already had high level talks with the likes of Cabinian and Ethicon Industry who have exp expressed interest in licensing our technology. We've also had conversations with some of the smaller players such as Comet and Maquette. In total, this represents three quarters of the market for thermal ligature devices. Our, our licensing model is going to be fairly typical for a device as it's first brought to market. For the first two years, we're prepared to give a non-exclusive agreement license to the likes of Covidian, and to your years 2017 and 2018, we'll bring on some other players. Uh, I'm sorry, 2015, 2016 exclusive license, 2017 and 2018, we'll give some non-exclusive license to some of the other players. By 2018, we're projecting revenue of over $30 million a year. And this is conservative for four reasons. First of all, it doesn't include any upfront payments, which we'll probably receive. Our scope of focus is just thermal ligature devices in this model in the United States. We'll be able to integrate with other devices globally. Our penetration rate in year 2018 is just 30%. It's a device that improves outcomes and decreased costs. We could be higher than that. And our price point to bright seat is just $15.50 in the deal. We easily could have captured more uh, margin on that. The long-term growth potential for Brightsea is really quite encouraging. We're predicting an EBITDA of $11 million in 2017 and an EBITDA of $28 million in 2018. As investors, you'll be, you'll be excited to know that using a conservative EBITDA multiple of five, our enterprise valuation in 2018 is expected to be $144 million. For, for the seed round investors, they will receive an annual IRR of 112% annually. That means that if you give us $500,000 today, we'll return $23 million in just five years. That's 43 times cash on cash. As a future position, I am committed to seeing safe sets brought into operating rooms as quickly as possible by benefit patients, physicians, providers, and payers, as is my team. Thank you to the Rice attendees, sponsors, and organizers for helping Brightseed put sense into surgical.